The Bible, no doubt, is the most amazing book in the world. It's the Word of God. It's the truth. It tells us everything that God wants us to know about Him. And in this book, there's many precepts, but this book is about one person, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you look on every page of the Bible, you can find the Lord Jesus. Now, I've been reading the Bible for many, many years, and it's always a blessing when, when God shows you a picture of something that you read and you think it just means what it's talking about initially, but then there's something behind it. God, God has many things that are hidden throughout his word. And if you listen to a lot of preaching, a lot of teaching, you'll hear a lot of different things. But one of the things God showed me many, many years ago was this that I'm going to show you today. And it's in Genesis chapter number two, where it shows the creation of the woman. And there's a picture behind that. So we'll just look at that. We'll start reading in verse number 18 of Genesis chapter number two. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them on to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helpmeet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her onto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now, I've read this many times over the years, and it was quite a, quite a few years back where it just came to me, and I'm sure this is God just opening the scripture up, at this is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here we have Adam that in a sinless state, he got a bride. Well, how did he get his wife? It's interesting that God took and he took one of his ribs, verse 21. Notice it says, and the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Now back in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, it says about Jesus is the first fruits of those that slept. He's, he slept. That's, that word slept is a euphemism for dying. And here we have the picture of the death of Adam, who is the first man, which pictured the Lord Jesus Christ dying the deep sleep pictures the death of the Lord Jesus to get his bride. Jesus Christ died. You know, he, was, he was sinless, and there's no doubt about that. And you say, where in the Bible does it say Jesus was sinless? Well, there's probably a lot of different places. But one, one place that I found is back in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number 4. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 15. Let's start reading here at the bottom of the page. For we have not a high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we, like as we are, yet without sin. So Jesus Christ, no doubt, is the perfect, sinless Son of God. And Adam, when Adam was created on day six, he was perfect. He was without sin. And God caused a deep sleep to fall upon him. And notice that he took one of his ribs. 
And notice what, what God did, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. You know, God could have made Eve any way he chose, but he chose to take, an, take a rib from Adam. So God cut the side of Adam open. Notice it says how he closed up the flesh instead thereof. And here we have God putting a man to sleep, which pictures death, the death of the Lord Jesus, taking out of that side, taking and taking a rib out, and making a wife, a woman, for the man. So here we have something that goes way beyond what we're reading here. It pictures the Lord Jesus Christ dying, and the the side, if you read back in the book of John, there was that soldier that took and pierced the side of the Lord Jesus Christ, and out came blood and water when that Roman soldier ripped his spear into the lifeless body of the Lord Jesus. And that's, I'll show you that quick back in the book of John, chapter 19. Always like looking at the actual verses in the Bible. Verse 33 says, But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. So here you have the Lord Jesus dead on the cross, getting his side pierced. Just like Adam was asleep, picturing the death of our Lord Jesus, and his side was cut open, and he noticed God closed up the flesh instead thereof. Now the thing with Adam, Adam awoke out of that sleep, and the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead he came forth from the grave, and he was left with scars not only in his, in his hands, but in his side. And here, Adam received a scar to purchase his bride. So, in a sense, it pictures the Lord Jesus Christ dying, having his side pierced, shedding blood to purchase his bride. And now in verse 23... Notice I have Ephesians 5, 30 through 32, Christ and the church written next to that. It's interesting the way this is written, what Adam said. Now, Adam, as soon as he has his, his wife brought to him, Adam says, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now going back to the book of Ephesians, the apostle Paul, who was a revealer of mysteries, God revealed so many mysteries to the apostle Paul, and Ephesians chapter number 5, we'll start reading down in verse 25, it says, Husbands, Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with a washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. And you read down through here, uh, verse number 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Just remember what we just read back, back in Genesis. Notice it says, we, that's talking about the bride, the church, born-again believers. For we are members of his body, of Christ's body, of his flesh, that's of Christ's flesh, and of his bones. Now, back in Genesis again, notice what Adam said. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And notice it says, they shall become one flesh. 
So again, back in Ephesians, we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Christ and the church. So, just a, a neat picture that God gives us with Adam. Adam was sinless at that point. He, he was put to sleep. He had his side cut open. The flesh, God closed it up. And Adam was left with a scar. And when, I guarantee you, when the flesh was cut open, there was blood. The first time blood was, was shed in this world was when God took and cut the side of Adam open to take a rib to make a woman. So we have, of course, I'm not going to get into it. I don't have a long video here, but you get into the book of the Revelation and you read about the bride. And I'll just look, I won't comment about it, but give you something to maybe read and study into. But we are, as believers today, we are a unique entity. We are the bride of Christ. And in Revelation 21, it says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, adorned as a bride, or prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now look in verse 9, it says, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. So this angel is going to show John, the bride, the Lamb's wife. And what does, what does this angel show John? It says, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me, that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So we as the bride of Christ are eternally linked with this great city, the new Jerusalem. So you think about that for a while. It's a, um, something to really dwell on. And Revelation 21 and 22 are some amazing chapters. They are what I refer to as eternity. And with God, God makes everything new. So there's a, that new beginning, eternity. And what, what's eternity going to be like? It's going to be a lot different when you hear preached from a lot of pulpits, that's for sure. But, <clears throat> but know for sure that the picture God gives us is such a wonderful picture. Christ, he, he is sinless. Adam, when, when he got his his wife he was sinless and the sleep pictures the death of the lord jesus adam slept side was cut open the blood was shed and he got his bride and the lord jesus got his bride the only difference is that the bride that that uh, christ has is going to be a perfect bride we will be without blemish without spot and we will live with him for eternity 